who should we follow on Instagram and other kind of mutual social media platforms? Um, so, uh, you know, at first you might, well, let's just use Instagram as an example. At first, you might be following your friends, um, family, you know, people that you have a personal connection to and might feel embarrassed uh, if you don't follow them kind of thing. Um, and that's okay. And that's fine. Uh, you know, there's a limited number of them, obviously, limited number of personal connections. And then you might also follow um, people like me, you know, educators, people whose content you're actually interested in, in, in you know, benefiting from, gaining from maybe people in your field, like, you know, thought leaders in your field. So that, that makes sense too. And there's probably a limited number of them because you can't read everyone's stuff. You can only, you have to pick and choose carefully which educators um, you follow. Uh, and then there are, and then, and then I would say uh, also important are per, um, potential or actual um, collaborators, uh, referral sources. Um, joint venture partners, strategic collab, strategic alliances, whatever you want to call them. It's these peers of yours who you might do something with at some point in terms of interview each other for each other's audiences to help each other grow your business, help each other grow your audiences, or to somehow collaborate in terms of, oh, you know, let me let me offer a discounted course to your to your audience, and you could do the same with mine. That can, or maybe do a webinar, you know, promote webinars together. So. So that's, um, so again, personal friends and family, of course, you know, you can do that if you want to. Sometimes it's not even needed. You could talk with your friends and family about that. Um, people you're learning from in your industry and maybe business marketing, and then strategic partners or potential, uh, you know, collaborators, um, referral sources. I think those are the three most important categories uh, to, to consider following. And then fourth, you might say, well, what about prospective clients? People follow me. And I think, well, that, that would be a great client to have, or um, maybe, uh, I think in the beginning that might be true, um, but as you grow your audience, it becomes, <laughs> it becomes less um, practical to have the time to look at everybody's profile and go, well, that's a, maybe a prospective client, so may, maybe I'll follow them. Um, uh, yeah, so I, at this point, I no longer, I mean, it's been, uh, it's been a while. It's been quite a while since I've followed Perspective clients. I do. I do try to follow my clients as a courtesy. Um, although I don't really spend much time on Instagram as a consumer, you know, liking posts and things. I, I spend very little time. I, every time on Instagram, I'm just like responding to comment or liking the comments on my posts and things like that. But, but as your audience grows, you, you'll find yourself with basically these three categories. Again, personal friends and family, maybe. Okay, even that. That's optional depending on your relationship to them and how embarrassed you would be that not, <laughs> that kind of stuff um like i have to follow my brothers i have i have two brothers so it's like not a big deal okay but i'm not going to follow my cousins or, or or anybody else like that right it's like i don't care what they say you know it's like they see me like once every couple years um so uh and follow educators you know again people people in my industry that i'm learning from etc that's good and then strategic partners or potential um collaborators not really potential clients. Oh, oh, clients probably yes, maybe if it feels appropriate and, and supportive. Again, you, you're not promising that you're going to like all their posts or even any of their posts, but it's just kind of like a street. So all of you, I try to follow all of you, but you see, I don't, I don't engage with yourself. So my apologies, those of you who are clients here. Um, uh, but but um, potential clients uh, in the beginning, maybe especially if it's like a really ideal client, I would think of it more as market research rather than, oh, I'm going to engage with them. So maybe they become a client of mine. I, I think that's, um, uh, it's not a great use of time, in my opinion. But if you're following a prospective client as a market research, like, oh, I want to see what they're interested in, what they're thinking about, what's on their mind, so that I can tailor my content better, my offerings better, I think that makes a lot of sense. So let me know if this makes sense. If you have any questions, comment below. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, does. Go ahead. It does make sense. As a follow-up question, can I ask 
you that okay so because like you said as you grow your audience is a better idea like you know when they drop in messages or through messenger or in fb or through instagram which i am now having at this point of time there's quite a lot of engagement so to connect them through the uh, dms and then rope them Direct or messages. basically ask them for market research that's what that sure. was my way yeah. of doing things was going ah, i see be. what you mean yes 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 if you especially if you are um reaching out for market research conversations uh it, you know to, to direct message someone on instagram uh successfully i mean to, to have them see it you both need to be following each other you know i mean you could direct message if someone doesn't follow you but then that goes into the message requests and they might not see it okay. so yes uh, um it does make sense you're kind of your most ideal um potential clients you follow them if they especially if they follow you and then you follow them back then you could start the direct message there yeah so yeah. that makes sense great thank you yeah great. thank you george thank you